Sri Vishnu Sahasranam, name 697, according to the commentary of Sri Parashara Bhatta. Beginning from this name, going up to name 786, that's 89 names, Sri Parashara Bhatta gives meanings based on Krishna, specifically on Krishna, uh, Krishna avatar, Krishna as he appeared in this world some 5,000 years ago. Mm. It means connected with Krishna's activities as he manifested them here in this world. That's 89 names. Another commentator in the Sri Vaishnava Sampradaya, Sri V. V. Ramanujan, has grouped the names up to 848 starting here. That's 151 names under the title Dushta Nigraha Shishta Paripalanam. He gives understandings uh, based on the Lord's function uh, that he carries out when he comes to this world of destroying the wicked, curbing the wicked, and maintaining the good. As Krishna himself says in Bhagavad Gita very famously, Paritranaya sadhunam vinashayata duskritam dharma samsthapanataya sambhavami yuge yuge. In every age, Krishna says, I come to uplift the good people, to destroy the bad people, and to fully establish dharma. So this name, 697, is Vasureta. <coughs> what does it mean? Well, it can have various meanings. <coughs> Vasu has various meanings, and Reta has various meanings. So when we combine the various meanings, we get multiple meanings. Vasu as a noun means a class of deities, Deva Bhedaha, fire, Anala, a ray of light, Rashmi. That's a well known girl's name here in India. Where does the light come from? Are there any girls there called Rashmi listening in on this? You can listen in and find out. A rein or halter, rein, R E I N, that's for a horse or other animal, Vasu, that's Vasu, not Vasu. Gem, Ratna, Wells, Dhana, and one, uh, one dictionary meaning is Vishnu. This is, after all, Vishnu Sahasranama. Vishnu, specifically referring to the quality of Vishnu as being intelligent or wise, Vedaha. So the, the, the first meaning, that is given by Sri Parashara Bhatta is that Vishnu, Krishna, is the source of all light. God is light. We've heard that many times. God is light. And we will learn now, or if we didn't already know, we'll find out more of how God is light. Certainly God is everything. But he's much, much more than light also. So taking the, the word Rashmi, uh, Vasu to mean Rashmi, to mean a ray of light or light in general, and Reta, cause or source. Reta is also a word used for semen. So the, the source of all light this is the first meaning, the, the, uh, the source of all light and particularly the, the divine luster, the Brahma Jyoti, the spiritual light, which is the source of all light. In this world, the source of that 
is Krishna, Vishnu. <clears throat> so God is light, yes, but we have to go further to understand. Just like we can say, the sun, the sunlight is the sun. I'm now sitting in the sun and the wind <laughs> and in space. If we take I to mean this body. <clears throat> so I'm sitting in the, when I say I'm sitting in the sun, it means in the sunlight, not in the sun globe. This body is not suitable for sitting in the sun globe. So more uh, complete understanding of this, the sun is that it's not just the light, but the sun globe. And an even more advanced understanding is to understand the the personality overseeing the affairs of the sun planet, the sun god, Surya Dev. He is the, the source of love. Of course, Krishna is the source of everything. But specifically considering light. Uh, he's the source of earth, water, air, fire, ether, mind, intelligence, egoism, enlightenment, happiness, distress, uh, everything. Krishna is the source of everything comes from Krishna. Uh, but even, even the sun gets light from Krishna. Isn't that wonderful? The sun is giving out tremendous light. At every second we are told by our scientific friends that at every moment the, the sun gives out more light than could be used by the whole human race in billions of years. Because after all, this earth is a long way away from the sun and it's only a microscopic speck in the, in the universe. And so it only receives a tiny fraction of the sun's light. And that also at 93 or so, 93 million or so miles away. So the sun gives out tremendous uh, light and heat. Uh, some years ago, the scientists didn't know how that happens. Now they have some explanation. They say it's due to uh, to put it simply, because I, I looked it up, but I couldn't follow it very clearly. Um, it's it's like atomic. Like, like nuclear fission or atomic explosions going on. In, but what, how is that going on? We can speculate. Even if we say it's due to atomic explosions going on, a whole, whole bunch of big bangs going on all the time. How is that? What's the source of that? Ultimately, the source is supernatural, which means that through telescopes and microscopes and... and uh, uh, trying to understand through our mental abilities and mathematics, we won't be able to understand it. We can just accept that the source of everything is Krishna. How much power does Krishna have? Krishna is the source of all light. Of course, the sun has light, the moon has light, uh, fire has light. The source of all light is Krishna. Yada Ditya Gatang Tejo. Yada Ditya Gatang Tejo. Jagat Bhasa Yate Kilam. Yad Chandramasi Yad Chagnao. Tat Tejo Vidhimama Kam. Krishna is this, the source of light of the sun, the moon, fire and by extension everything else. Krishna is the source of light. We can hardly imagine. Not only is Krishna the source of light, but uh, the sun, the major source of light in the universe, it rotates on his order. Yad chakshur esha savita sakala grahanam raja samastasura murti rasesha tejaha 
Yes, Yagya Yabhamati Sambhrita Kala Chakra Govinda Madhi Purusham Tamaham Bajami. It used to be a common practice among Hindus to early in the morning offer prayers to the rising sun. We don't see that much nowadays. You can do it remembering Krishna by chanting this prayer every morning, the one that I just recited. Yaj Chakshure Isha Savita. The sun who is like the eye of the universe. The sun sees everything. We, we see with these eyes, thanks to the sunlight. Uh, who is the king, like the king of all the gods within this universe. Because all the gods, they also need the sun to see, however great one may be. So that mighty, powerful sun rotates on the order of Krishna, the original Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is far greater than millions of suns. Therefore, we offer our respect to the, to the sun means offering to Krishna. What, what, a, what, a wonderful, what a manifestation of Krishna's power is this. That, it's actually very insignificant from Krishna's point of view, but from our point of view, because we are so insignificant, the light of the sun is uh, inconceivable to us. And we should know that is the com coming from Krishna. And the sun is the, the first, uh, the first thing we see, the sea we see every day. We, even if we're in a room, if we see uh, from natural light, it comes from the sun. So the, the first manifestation, the first uh, great manifestation, actually everything's a manifestation of Krishna's glory. But the, the first manifestation every morning of the glory of God that we can see. And of course the... Uh, twice-born members of the Varnashram Society, they greet the sun, they worship the sun every morning and then when the sun's at the zenith and just as the sun is setting, they, they offer prayers to the sun through the Brahma Gayatri and according to their own understandings, the Vaishnavas, they understand that by offering prayers to the sun, we are offering to Vishnu, who is Vasureta, who is the source of all light. Another verse from uh, Bhagavad Gita, Jyoti, or half a verse, Jyoti Shama Pitad Jyotis Tamasaf Paramuchate. Krishna says, He is the source of light in everything that is luminous, which are beginning with the sun. He is beyond the darkness of matter. Now, one name that came up uh, previously in Vishnu Sahasranam is Mahadyuti. Great light, great luster. So we can link this in here. Many of the names, of, they're all the names in Vishnu Sahasranam are interrelated because they're all names of Vishnu. But some of them are in, they, they have more closer relationship with each other. So Mahadyuti is one name uh, that has already come. Uh, in the, since speaking on that name, I came across a passage in the edition of uh, Sri Valmiki Ramayana, which is produced by, uh, translated by Vidvan Goranga Prabhu in the commentary there. Um, so I came across a statement which I... I'll read. Now, Mahadyuti indicates that he was endowed, he, Rama, Krishna, Vishnu, was endowed with a special splendor born out of his abundant delight on having obtained an opportunity to protect his saintly devotees. So, the this, this Supreme Lord is glowing. Saintly persons, they glow. Atma Jyoti. They glow with the light of the soul. And the source of that light, the source 
the, 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 the Atmatma, another name which comes. Uh, the, the, the soul of all souls is Krishna. So he becomes radiant, just like we said, someone becomes, they're bright looking, means they're happy. So Krishna becomes happy, he becomes radiant on getting the opportunity to serve or protect his devotees. Isn't that beautiful? God is light. Yeah, we heard that so many times, didn't we? This, this was often, uh, or several times in the very early Back to Godhead magazines printed in America. There is a, uh, an extract from the writings of William Blake who was an uh, English mystic in which he wrote, God appears and God is light to those poor souls who dwell in night, but does a human form display to those who dwell in realms of day. Very interesting that William Blake, uh, English mystic, Generally, the mystics, by their realization, they come to the realization that God is light, which is not incorrect, but it's, it's, it is incomplete. But William Blake has gone further to understand that for persons who are in the darkness of ignorance, they conceive of God as, of God as light. But those who are in the daytime those who are in the light, they realize that it's not just light, but the Supreme Lord has his own form also, human-like form. Narakriti. It seems to be like a human, not exactly human. Uh, the anth uh, anthropomorphism is the theory that God is created by in the image of man, that man has imagined some God who's human-like. But the actual thing, as is stated in the Bible, and of course in the Vedic literatures, is that man is created in the image of God. Uh, God is light. One reporter uh, at a news conference, in uh, not in, a reporter's meeting, with Srila Prabhupada, uh, dear, most revered Srila Prabhupada. In Melbourne in 1974, a reporter said to Srila Prabhupada, it is written in many scriptures that God is light. Srila Prabhupada responded, God is everything, God is darkness also. If God is everything, he's light and he's darkness also. We say that God is that from, from whom everything comes. So light also comes, darkness also comes, so darkness also comes from God. Notice that uh, Srila Prabhupada accepted that God is light and God is darkness. But then the, the light and darkness come from him. So he is and he isn't. Bheda Bhed. In the same way that the sun light is the sun in one sense. But in another sense, not. In the same way, darkness is light, because darkness, there, there's no meaning to darkness without light. We can, for, a, for a person who's congenitally blind, there's no difference between daytime and nighttime. So God is the source of everything. He's the source of darkness also. In one sense, we can say that God is darkness. Although in, in uh, allegoric terms, Darkness means to forget him. So there's no question of darkness or ignorance without him. Because ignorance means to forget him, to not know him. Now why do we emphasize light and not darkness? Because light is the natural, healthy, nourishing condition. And darkness means we're groping around, we don't know where we're going. There's a name coming up, Sadgati, in the next verse. The, the, the actual destination, for, uh, or the destination of the pious and good people. So we don't know, why, we don't know where we're going. We, we're in the daytime, now is daytime. 
uh, as I'm speaking this. It's daytime, but most people are in darkness because they don't know where they're going. They're allegorically or in the, in the darkness. So we emphasize light and not darkness. Now I'm going to read from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 3, chapter 26, text 3, which is uh, very uh, relevant in regard to this name Vasureta and the understanding that God is light. Anadir Atma Purusho Nirguna Prakrite Paraha Pratyagdhama Swayam Jyotir Vishvam Yena Samanvitam is this the translation by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, founder of Acharya of Iskon. Srila Prabhupada writes, The Supreme Personality of Godhead is the Supreme Soul, and He has no beginning. He is transcendental to the material modes of nature, and is beyond the existence of this material world. He is perceivable everywhere because He is self-effulgent, and by His self-effulgent luster, the entire creation is maintained. That's a lot. It's easy to read, but there's so much there to understand. The particular point I want to pick up on here is that he is self-effulgent. From our perspective as little beings on a little planet in a little universe, the sun appears to be self-effulgent. But we know that the, the sunlight actually comes from Krishna, who's self-effulgent. Uh, so this point I'm picking up on, he is self-effulgent and by his self-effulgent -efful luster the entire creation is maintained by, by the light of the sun and the action of the sun. Even the uh, materialistic scientists say that the uh, this universe as it is now as we know it or, this, or what they call a galaxy that will be, that will come to an end when the sun comes to an end. So I'm going to read the purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, packed with uh, profound transcendental knowledge, as all of his purports. To explain it all in detail is not possible right now, so please listen very carefully and try and understand. Srila Prabhupada writes, The Supreme Personality of Godhead is described here. He is not a temporary person, nor does he have a beginning. He is without a cause, and he is the cause of all causes. Paraha means transcendental, beyond the creative energy. The Lord is the creator of the creative energy. We can see that there is a creative energy in the material world, but he is not under this energy. He is prakriti paraha, beyond this energy. He is not subjected to the threefold miseries created by the material energy because he is beyond it. The modes of material nature do not touch him. It is explained here, Swayam Jyotihi. This, is, this term is particularly relevant with the, in connection with the name Vasureta, which we are discussing. He is light himself. Swayam Jyotihi. He is light himself. God is light. We have experience in the material world of one light's being a reflection of another, just as moonlight is a reflection of the sunlight. Sunlight is also the reflection of the Brahma Jyoti. How about that? Similarly, Brahma Jyoti, the spiritual effulgence, is a reflection of the body of the Supreme Lord. This is confirmed in the Brahma Sanghita. Yasya, yasya Prabha Prabhavata. The Brahma Jyoti or Brahman effulgence is due to his bodily luster. Therefore it is said here, Swayang Jyoti He. He himself is light. His light is distributed in different ways as the Brahma Jyoti, as sunlight, and as moonlight. Bhagavad Gita confirms that in the spiritual world there is no need of sunlight, moonlight, or electricity. The Upanishads also confirm this. Yes, this Natad Bhasayate Suryo that is exactly uh, taken or, or uh, parallel of Upanishadic statements. 
Because the bodily luster of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is sufficient to illuminate the spiritual world, there is no need of sunlight, moonlight, or any other light or electricity. This self-illumination also contradicts the theory that the spirit soul or the spiritual consciousness develops at a certain point in material combination. The term Swayam Jyotihi indicates that there is no tinge of anything material or any, or any material reaction. It is confirmed here that the concept of the Lord's all-pervasiveness is due to his illumination everywhere. We have experienced that the sun is situated in one place, but the sunlight is diffused all around for millions and millions of miles. This, that is our practical experience. Similarly, although the Supreme Light is situated in his personal abode by Kuntha or Vrindavana, his light is diffused not only in the spiritual world, but beyond that. In the material world also, that light is reflected by the sun globe, and the sunlight is reflected by the moon globe. Thus, although he is situated in his own abode, his light is distributed all over the spiritual and material worlds. The Brahma Sanghita confirms this. Goloka eva nivisatya kela labhutaha. He is living in Goloka, but still he is present all over the creation. He is the super soul of everything, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And he has innumerable transcendental qualities. It is also concluded that although he is undoubtedly a person, he is not a Purusha of this material world. Mayavadi philosophers cannot understand that beyond this material world there can be a person, therefore they are impersonalists. But it is explained very nicely here that the personality of Godhead is beyond material existence. So that's the end of that purport. <clears throat> so uh, again, the, the, the source of all light is uh, Vishnu Vasureta. There's a um, similar meaning is derived by other Acharyas. Uh, Arangacharya, drawing on the Nirukti, the uh, Sanskrit dictionary, we could say. Vasu Shabdo Jyotir Arto. So it means that the, the meaning of the word Vasu is light, Retas Tat Karanang Matam, and Retaha means the source of. Divya Jyoti Karanatvat Vasureta Prakirtita. There they so the, the source Vasureta the, the, the name Vasureta means the source of divine effulgence. Um, yeah and yeah then Anangar Acharya says that Specifically, his divine light is the cause for all his incarnations. And another commentator, and these are all Sri Vaishnava commentators, Ramanujan, V.V. Ramanujan, gives the example of Krishna. In the Bhagavatam, it's stated that uh, when Vasudev, after the seven pregnancies of Devaki. Prior to Devaki's eighth pregnancy, Vasudeva became very bright. His bodily luster became bright because he was carrying Krishna in his heart. He became hard to even look at. He was so bright. And then when he transferred Krishna to the womb of Devaki, she then also shone very brightly. And then Kangsa could understand, oh, now the one who has come to kill me is in the womb of Devaki. So uh, this uh, explanation that, that, that Krishna comes with his light. He is light. 
we're reminded of the Vedic statement, Asatoma Sadgamaya. Uh, come out of the darkness, or come out of the asat, come to the light. Now another meaning, uh, this one is given by Shankara Acharya, which is fully in accord with scripture. Shankara, he, in his explanations, he doesn't go outside scripture, although the interpretations are contestable. So Shankara says, he whose essence is golden. <clears throat> and he quotes from Shastra. It, it's well known, the golden egg. Devapurva mapa shrishtva tasu viryam upasrijat tadandam abhavad haimam brahmana karam param. The Lord created the waters, he cast his power into them, it became the golden egg, the prime source of Brahma. So the golden egg from which the universe hatched, that comes from Vishnu. There are descriptions in all the Puranas and in the original Vedas, it's very widely uh, described, well, maybe not all the Puranas, but many of them, certainly in Srimad Bhagavatam, that in the beginning of creation, there were the primeval waters, and the Lord dropped his essence, his virya in that water. It formed into a golden egg from which Brahma, the creator, arose. Then the Lord, as the womb of all creation, uh, is in this way is mentioned as Hiranyagarbha, the golden womb. Mm. And uh, an, an analogy is given that as gold ornaments are not only gold. There must be some admixture of copper in order to, that gold can be used to fashion ornaments. That's why we have 18 karat gold, 20 karat gold, 22 karat gold, depending on how much copper is mixed with that. So in the same way, uh, Krishna, his virium, his, his power, his energy is required. The material world is composed of matter, but it requires the, the input of Krishna's energy to enliven it and, and make it work. So that is, the, uh, that is one meaning of Vasurita, whose energy is... And that, that fits very well with the next meaning, uh, is the, the three main meanings um, given he who is the cause or origin of the universe. So there are many names which have that meaning also. <clears throat> Bhuta Bhavana, who brings all the, uh, the, the, who brings everything into being. That's another name from Vishnu Sahasranama. But so Vasureta, one of the meanings of Vasureta is synonymous with that. So, uh, derived from Amarakosh, which is another, I said Nirukti is one Vedic dictionary, uh, another is Amarakosh, or Vedic or Sanskrit, of the Sanskrit language. Uh, so here we have from Amarakosh. Deva bhede nale rashmo vasu ratne dhane vasu vishno chaved ha stritva sir hita shang sadhi shang trayo ho. So in this, uh, in this understanding, rata derived from, yeah, it means to flow, so it means to, refers to semen. And in this way, uh, is understood that the semen or the source of the universe is Vishnu, and our own 
Gorya commentator Shibaladev Vidyabhushan gives this understanding in this regard that Vasu in this regard means Pradhana that in which the material elements beginning with Mah Mahatattva dwell Vasanti from Vasanti Vasu during the time of dissolution so in this way uh, by his seed Reta in the form of a multitude of atomic individual souls that is placed within the Pradhana and then that gives rise to the that gives rise to the cosmic manifestation. Apareya mitas tvanyang prakriting vidhime param jiva bhuta mahabaho yayedam dharyate jagat. This jagat, this world, which is always moving, it's moving because of the presence of the spirit souls within them. And they are impregnated within the primal material nature by Vishnu and, and in this regard Baladev Vidhabhushan quotes Bhagavad Gita Mama yo near Mahad Brahma Tasmin Garbham Dadamiaham Material nature, the cause of the ma material manifestation is my womb in which I place the embryo Satyadeva Vashishta uh, unique uh, commentator usually gives unique meanings and usually uh, sources from the uh, Vedas in doing so um, he gives the idea of vas, vasu vas nivasa nivase dwelling to dwell and he derives the meaning that he in whom the whole universe dwells or resides is Vasu and Reta he takes us to mean the cause or the root and he thus gives the interpretation that Vasu Reta refers to one who is the cause of all things in this universe that's the name Vasu Reta, God is light and much more Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare.